Hi, welcome to this week's edition of Blue Sock. Again, John Dave and myself. We're going to look back over Leinster's comprehensive victory against the Ospreys last weekend and talk about all things Rugby World Cup. So, boys, I suppose the biggest news of the day, obviously, is the cancellation of the the two the the two big games uh, from Yokohama Stadium uh, this weekend. Indeed. Um, if it, the two games that it is that are definitely being cancelled I don't think anybody's crying too much possibly apart from the supporters who get forgotten in this lots of people pay James, James mate's very pissed off uh, Sergio, Sergio Parisa, well yeah. there you go look, look. I feel sorry for him that's how bad things are lots of people forget the uh, forget the supporters and the fact that they've gone at great expense out to Japan and now they have tickets for a game which yeah they get their money back but they're still in Japan for they won't get their airfare. They won't get their airfare. They won't get their hotels. They won't get their booze money. They won't get all of that other stuff. Uh, and as you say, Geraldini and Sergio Sergio Parisi could have been on 143 caps, and he's only on 142. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Geraldini wants to finish his career allegedly. If that tweet has uh, mm. is true, he, wanted, he was going to get off the bench for 20 minutes to to put a cap on his career, which would have been nice for him. Uh, but you know, other than that. Well, that game has nothing riding on it because the All Blacks, for sure. with both hands tied behind their back, asleep with twenty points on them, would still yeah. be. Yeah, th- th- be that's fair it. enough, but you still have they still have to do that. Yeah, and that's the whole point of the competition. Like, I mean, you could. I agree. If you said that if you were to say that Team A would always be Team B, then what's the point in having, having a game? competition? Like I'm in a yeah. prediction competition. Yeah, but would I be, cha- you know, the Europe, the world champion at the end of it? No, just because <laughs> I'm picking in my mind and by the winning score. You know what I mean? Like, yes. Yeah. You gotta play these matches, but like the other match, the the France uh, England, the France England that actually like, had something right. Now. It did, yeah, and like you know, there's obviously the quarter final and semi final permutations of who mm-hmm. the winner and runner up of that particular pool would play. Yeah, well, it could. Uh, England might actually enjoy losing that one. They get to play Wales and they avoid the All Blacks until the final. Uh, yeah, whereas, on the other hand, they have to play Wales, who you know are better than them at the moment. Well, we'll see. Allegedly. Um, well, currently France are in that spot, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. and so it's, uh, as it stands, it's going to be uh, England, Australia, and Wales, France. So you know, unless Wales, no, actually, if Wales is called off, it's, they still top the group. I they think, just need two I, points. I don't to top think the group. that match is going to be called off. No, but if it is, uh, they they only need a draw, and they can't be caught at the top. Which of the game group. is this? Wales and you know, Uruguay. I don't think that one's in, in danger. I mean, it's no. a, it's an absolute sh- shambles, and it makes the sport look small. But can I just ask a question, lads? There's two indoor stadiums, and in, you know, there's only eight stadiums mm-hmm. been used. Two of them are indoors. Like I look, I'm sure there's all sorts of logistics, and I read a very uninspiring statement from some World organizer Rugby. from World Rugby, like. He was talking about, oh, it's important that we have the same standard. But like, there's only going to be two matches affected, possibly, right? Maybe a third, but certainly two. Could they not have, like, they've got these high-speed trains. Get every, get all the players, technical staff, and so on, onto the train and get them down. They know Play now. behind closed like, doors. Today's match, like, today's Thursday, right? The match isn't going to be played till Saturday. So they have two days to, probably more, to make that arrangement. Or in case of Scotland, Sunday. Sunday, exactly. Um, well, but Scotland see, it, haven't it's, been it's, not, it's not even two or three days yet. Japan were awarded the World Cup in 2009. You know, they've had 10 years to come up with a contingency plan. It's not like they never get this weather then. Mm. And it's not like they never get this weather at this time of year. World Rugby's sort of view was, well, if there was 12 matches cancelled, what would we do? Well, we have to have a a plan in place that we just give nil all draws and two points each. But that's not the point. There's only two matches affected currently. So surely that they can, you know, you can, you have to be flexible enough that your plan... I understand that there's a, every every match is going to be affected by let's say a massive earthquake that ripped the country asunder, but like the storm is hitting one particular part of a very long country, get them on a train and bring them down to the indoor stadium in, in Kobe. It's two and a half hours away. Okay. But uh, y- yes, absolutely, and, and but they should have had a plan, a contingency. They that wasn't part of their plan. Their plan was oh if the, we we cancel it and we give everyone two points. The fact of the matter is now that the result of this World Cup, not just the pools or whatever, the result of this World Cup is is going to be affected by what. Yeah, what's big happened. asterisks beside Ireland's yeah. victory. Yeah, there will be. There will be <laughs> because I mean the the thing is, would we have got out of our pool if Scotland had been last night? <laughs> well, I mean, the, but that's true. There will be an asterisk behind whoever beside whoever wins it because. We now know for certain that the results will be affected by it, because we that's that's I mean Italy uh, Italy are going out on the couch rather than on the field. 
uh, New Zealand are going through, that's fair enough. But then the, you've got the, the playoff combinations between, as you say, France and England, and you've got the situation in our group. So these are all affected by this. And if you want to put on your tinfoil hat, it is beneficial to Japan, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying that they were any hand or part in you know, making a decision, the Japanese rugby union, but the fact is that if, if they decide to cancel that game, they get a free pass in. Well, yeah, that's, 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 that's true. The only thing is that I don't think... And they top the group and get a better placement oh, yeah. in... The, the only thing is that I don't think World Rugby have the competency to organise a conspiracy. I mean, mm. a good conspiracy, you do actually have to be competent to do it. And I don't think World Rugby are competent enough to, it, to do it. I mean, this, this, I mean, we've seen after the first weekend, the chief executive deleted his Twitter account after the Australia-Fiji match. Why? Uh, I don't know, because you can never shut them up talking about how great World Rugby are and how great the disciplinary processes are and how great the tackle framework was. And then all of a sudden he disappears. He was anticipating a pasting. I think he was. And then Augustin Pichot has basically disappeared from Twitter. He makes the odd tweet in Spanish before uh, Argentinian matches. But normally, again, an inveterate tw- tweeter. So... I mean, something's gone wrong. John down. Klein scores a hat-trick, he'd be really pissed off. Oh, I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be, um, I, think, I, I don't think he'd be the only one. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, what, what's happened is that, you know, bad planning is, has allowed, have an effect on the outcome of the World Cup. I mean, that's... Yeah, you could say that. Uh, the other thing is, is that there, is, there were so many permutations with the weather. Like, it's not a thing, oh, we know this is coming for weeks. Like, that storm has shifted around in where it was going to hit several times in the last week. Like but, at one stage, no, fair enough, ver- various different to be games. Flexible. And right, they know now either on Wednesday, like either on Wednesday or Thursday, they knew. I mean, those yeah. rumors were flying around yesterday afternoon. That's right. right? That's four, so, so they knew at that point. There's two matches affected. I can understand if 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 there was every match was affected this weekend, and you say, well, what can we do? But when there's two in one particular city in Tokyo, bust them down the uh, road. Okay, Yokohama. Like, it's only those two. And surely to be, you know, you need to be lean and flexible that you can say, well, let's just implement the, this fix and move the, the, the competition down to the indoor stadium or away from where there's danger. And if people say, well, there's 70,000 p- tickets sold for the match. Do you know what? You all get a refund. We move it down to an indoor stadium and we play behind closed doors. So well, there's see, no there's kind of there's nothing ticket, in that there's nothing in that for world rugby because what what it's all about for them is this is their once once every oh, four year cash it has cow. to be that has to they be need better. the money but surely this has, has to the be reputational so, damage is going to cost them fortune job my true. boss is a soccer head he hates rugby like he despises well we it. can't laugh now we can't laugh but at the soccer world cup he's now. laughing at me he said what a joke organizing it in a in a typhoon zone, I didn't want to say to him, well, you're in the desert. Well, but, uh, <laughs> we've lost the moral high ground. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, the reputational damage to World Cup is, to, to, to World Rugby is, is, is significant. And it's a fact, I mean, England versus France is a huge match. It's yeah. a big game. Le Crunch. That's a game that would, that television advertising, for <clears> example, would sell at a huge premium. So that none of that money is going to come in now. Exactly, yeah. Um, all the licensing, all that stuff, that's all gone. I mean, Japan could, the, the host nation could lose a home game. That's going to have a significant knock on. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, not like, it's not like they're going to escape unscathed, apart from, you know, uh, a bit of damage to their reputation. Reputational damage in big business costs money. That's true. You know, you only have to ask Audi. Volkswagen. Was in a Volkswagen? Yeah. yeah. With the diesel. With the diesel. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, that's, that's a huge thing. So, if you give, and this goes for, I mean, the two biggest sporting events this year are the World Athletics Championship, ruined by the weather, and the World Rugby, ruined by the weather. Well, well it's not, not really. ruined yet. Affected by the weather. And then you've got the World Cup next year, which will be affected seriously by the weather. If you give tournaments for reasons other than sports, you know? But, like, I mean, they have the Formula One Grand Prix down there. Do you know what I mean? Do. Like... It's been in Japan for a long time, 50 years. They don't hold them during Typhoon They do, season, it's on this they? weekend, yeah. Is it? Yeah. It won't and, be on now. <laughs> well, they're considering cancelling qualifying <laughs> on Saturday. But it, what the point is, it's still on down there. Do you know what I mean? Formula One or... The I don't even know when the Formula One season is Well, I know. It's all, once Eddie Irvine left, that was me. Gone. <laughs> but, like, you know, what I mean is that Formula One is such a... Fly, not a fly-by-night, that's the wrong word. But such a, a, a commercial organisation that they don't care. They'll just, well, we're going to take your Grand Prix and move it to another city where 
pay us more money or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right, do you know what I mean? So, like, but they have it in Japan at this time of year where they could easily put it in. It doesn't matter whether it's in so March or whether yeah. it's in, in September. I thought it always used to be the last Grand Prix of the year, didn't it, Japanese Grand Prix? Did. I remember yeah. uh, Senna driving off um, Hill, was it? I Not Senna, sorry. Schumacher driving was it, Hill wasn't off. Wasn't it the Japanese Grand Prix that uh, Eddie's, Eddie Irvine and Ayrton Senna had their little they set did. to when did indeed, yeah. Eddie Irvine they unlapped them. himself? Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, it's it's ninety four, was it ninety three? Might have been. It was it was whenever Jordan had those terrible Yamaha engines, wasn't it? Or was it the next year? Anyway, and those terrible <laughs> yellow jackets. Uh, wrong, it? Um, nothing wrong with yellow in general. Just those jackets were shit. Uh, this is yours actually an orange T-shirt. Just looks yellow lovely. on the screen. Buzzing yeah. hornets, wasn't it? But the, but the thing is, I mean, it it it, it has asterisked the World Cup. Um, now. At the end of the day, I mean, we could these could be the only two games we lose, in terms of the tournament, Scotland and. But could you imagine if this was, a month later, and it was the weekend of the World Cup final, like do you know what I mean? Like the, I'm not saying it's the biggest. Well, I don't think they could make the that world. a draw. Hmm? I don't think they <laughs> could make that a draw. But what would they do? Like I mean, if there's a hurricane have to do coming, something. if there's a hurricane coming up, up into Yokohama, and there's seventy thousand people going to be there, but it's the most prestigious rugby match that's played this year. You know the worst thing about this, the very worst thing, worse than anything else to do with this, is that they proved uh, Christopher right. Because <laughs> there's nowhere you can run <laughs> waiting for a hurricane. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, moving to matters on the pitch, right? Shudder. There was a couple of matches since we last spoke. Obviously, Ireland's great 35 nil victory against the Ruskies. Um, Wondrous. We made eleven changes though, so like it got a lot of, uh, it did get a lot of criticism for the performance, but we did make eleven changes. Like making eleven changes to any team and against any opposition, you're still not going to have everything running smoothly. Look, we got our bonus point. We got in under the radar, and if we can beat Samoa on Saturday, it'll be almost job done. If we can get a bonus point against them, it will be job done. Um, you know, before the tournament, we were thinking we were going to cruise through this pool, and Scotland was the hardest game. When it blitz Scotland, and all of a sudden, Japan is the hardest game, and we're starting to look uh, like we have feet of clay. So, you know, it's it's dampened down expectations among supporters for sure, uh, which is no bad thing. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't exactly, would like getting a bonus point so late against Russia. Mm. I mean, you saw how they fell apart against Scotland. Now I know they were short turnaround. It's their last game. They're out in their feet, and they're amateurs, and they're running out of fitness but like the last try or two Scotland scored they were the Russians were just walking around the defence uh, why couldn't we have caught them on that day and racked up a big score I think I'd rather be in our position than Scotland's position well that's though. true that's very true yeah yeah I mean there's, there's, there's two ways I mean there's obviously there's, there's two sides to the story in a way um, obviously at the end of the, the day all that matters is the bonus point the big killer for us um, is the Japan getting that bonus but, point uh, against Samoa uh, we, just, we, we, we can't worry about Japan's performance against Samoa. We can worry about is their own performance against Scotland, mm-hmm. or against uh, Russia. Russia shouldn't have Russia shouldn't have been in the tournament. Remember, mm. yep. Russia aren't good enough to be in the tournament. Russia were only in the tournament because three teams ahead of them were disqualified. Yep, that's how bad Russia are. So us struggling to get a bonus point of them is not a good sign that we that we're bouncing back from the Japanese defeat. <clears throat> no, nope. um, and Samoa are quite a bit better than Russia. Mm. And for, 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 for no other reason than they've actually qualified for the tournament on merit. And they beat let's, Russia 34 0. Yeah, Only a point less than us. Japan Samoa game. I watched that the other day. I thought it was an entertaining game. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of the games have been entertaining, yeah. no matter how mm. one sided the scoreline has been. The rugby has been good. Well, even the, even the maybe I put it like, you know, they put 30 minutes up against New Zealand, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not that long ago. I'm, I'm talking 20 years ago when if Ireland put up a good 30, 40 minute performance against New Zealand. You'd be you'd dancing be, in the streets. Well, you'd be kind of, you know... You'd be pleased. You'd be kind of going, well, we didn't let her down yeah. for the first half. Yeah. You know, but anyway, um, that's Samoa, like, it's, it's hard to kind of throw, it's hard to kind of throw accusations, but it just didn't look right to him taking that scrum when the clock in the red, when nothing could, could affect the scoreline. It couldn't, they, they weren't going to get a bonus point, they weren't going to affect the scoreline, except... They've kind of thrown a spanner in the work for the other countries in the pool. Well, you can't really blame Samoa for that now. In fairness, it's not Taking up to them. Taking a scrum on their own line when the clock's in the red it's after the, the previous three minutes before 
they were shunted back on on their own put in. It's not up to them to give a shit about us though, for any yeah, reason. They, they, it's, it's up no, to no, I understand that. I understand that. I'm merely saying, no matter. I've played on many a crap team, <laughs> and. <laughs> <laughs> So that was a bit of a slow burner, that one. <laughs> and at some point, you say, let's get off the pitch here. When the clock is red and you're, you know, you've got nothing from the game, it's not like that they're, they had any opportunity to, to, get, to get even within a bonus point. They were off the, you know, off the pace. And like they still continued playing, which, I don't know, just... You have you, to question you their... Wonder. You have to question their sanity, perhaps, you just, but... You uh, can't I mean, question if, their... If it hadn't affected our result, would you not be admiring their moxie? That's well, what I was see, about to say, is, you can't question. But the yeah. thing is, right, if you're playing in a regular competition, that's okay. But when it's in a kind of a tournament like this, where there's small pools, where the matches are all around, you know, in close proximity to the, you know, to the next matches, the next day or whatever... And it's so tight. It's not like over a league where there's maybe 20 matches over the season that all these things even themselves out. The teams only play three or four ma- four matches. So, you know, like them sc- allowing uh, the Japanese to score that bonus point try, that, to get that bonus point, it kind of screwed everything up. When, Did for us. But, but when <laughs> Japan didn't necessarily deserve to have that bonus point, because the clock was in the red and they decided they'd commit Harry Carey to try and have a scrum on. Like, what was the point of having a bloody scrum on their own line? Because they wanted to score a try. From where? On uh, their own line. An, an own try. No, they wanted to score a try, but that's the of thing. Of course, we all, want to go, it, it, we all want to score tries, but you know, at some point you go, we've it, had it was, 82 there's no, minutes there's, There was the no win or lose for Samoa in it. So yep. if you're not gonna, if there's no win or lose, you may as well have some fun, and that's what they were doing. It's not yep. that what 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 how that result affects us is not their problem no. at all. But you know, when you walk off the pitch, right? If I walked off the pitch after losing the match, I'd rather say, "Well, do you know what? We were within nine points, rather than saying, well, we were within uh, sixteen points." Yeah, yeah, possibly. Uh, it does. So what, I, for so whatever was reason, that not a good reason for them to go for it then. That they were within nine and they conceded a try. They had a scrum on the line that their scrum has already been. Decimated. But if they were within nine and they had scored a try, they would have been within seven, within they two. Have, they would have got their bonus points. Okay, well, I, fine. Anyway, what it does for us is, it means that Japan, if the if a game if the game is cancelled between Japan mm. and Scotland, if they hadn't got that bonus point, we would be top in the pool. But because they have got that bonus point, they'll be top in the pool. Yeah. So that's that's the big difference it makes. Um, the only winner here is Rob Howley and his thousand if, <laughs> if Japan if if Japan go on uh, play the game and go ahead and win it, then it's all irrelevant, you know. Maybe we should get Colleen Rooney to uh, <laughs> investigate. <laughs> Indeed. Well, not that it really matters, but there was one result that was a bit touching. Uh, France were within two, or Tonga were within two points of France, you know? Yeah. Like France sort of. Again? Again, yeah. They nearly so, they bet them in two days. One match I did see, I was actually home for a few hours yesterday and I saw the way. Wasn't that a cracking game? game. That was a good game, game yeah. yeah. Wales Imagine looked... they had to play the full Rad Rad Rad. <laughs> <laughs> Wales looked like they were they were swimming there for a while. They looked like they were in trouble. Uh, in the yeah. end, it was a bonus point victory for them, which is great. Uh, and as we said, they only need a draw now against Uruguay or, or a cancellation to top the pool. But uh, they they looked in trouble for for quite a few up, up until about sixty minutes when they they scored two tries uh, in in quick relatively quick succession and took the thing away from. Uh, and it's, it's great when you do that as a. <laughs> When your I team does I that, thanks. Gareth Davis was just brilliant. He was brilliant. He's I thought a cracking Captain player. Davis yeah. was superb as well. I mean, that little giddly for the yeah, try. Lovely. Mm-hmm. But after because I, I I was at home. And my wife was working from home that day, and I after seven minutes there was a break in play. And I ran up to her and I, I said, "Really, there's seven minutes gone. There's been one two uh, one try scored, two disallowed, and a yellow card. It was only seven minutes. <laughs> now, I mean, it just started off. Was that the end of Marion's productive afternoon? No, 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 no. <laughs> She's much more disciplined than I am. But um. It, it just that was the like that first half in particular was one of the best halves of rugby I've seen this year. It was absolutely superb. I mean, yeah. Fiji are just outside the big eight, and if they got more regular competition, you could see them pushing That's into it. Though, isn't it? I mean, it just needs, like, I suppose, it's the old Tony Chestnut. It's the funding, but it's also it's like their players are you know the economy is so screwed and yeah, and nobody goes down there and, and plays all them. of the yeah that's true too. And then all of the players are desperate to get out and get a contract in France. Europe, France. 
uh, even Japan. Provide for their family. And, and then they get, no, like that because they're over a barrel, the clubs won't give them any more than the actual bare minimum release for, or even some of them kind of encourage them not to play for their country, you know? Mm. Like it's, it's a, they're in kind of a, a catch-22 really. But the, they, don't have, they don't have a regional competition that's at their standard to play in. I mean, the, the, when the, Super Rugby started off in the mid nineties or early nineties, there was a Fijian team. Yeah, well, there was actually two. There was I think there was Tonga and mm. Fiji were in it. They were one of the. the it was I think it was Super Super 10, Eight, Super Ten, mm. But they were they were they had a team in it, and then then and South it went Africa to twelve. Joined, didn't it? it was twelve, and yeah, South Africa came into it. Yeah. Professional um, era. The Pacific Islands got j- and jettisoned. Got jettisoned pretty damn quick once money came into it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean Fiji, Fiji are too good for the for their for their regional association. Um, but the problem is that would they get player release to join? Well, they might for the rugby championship if they were to join the rugby championship. But you know, you put Fiji and Japan. You have the to put them in Super and Rugby create, uh, and create a Six Nations. You'd have to do the same kind of thing as you did as they did with the Sunwolves and the Hagawares. Well, Sunwolves are getting the toe end. Um, it is this no need for it anymore. It is the World this over. C- c- cozy cartel within rugby. Isn't there is a, like there is cricket's I mean, very still, similar as there's well. There's still very much the old international mm. board kind of thing. Um, but the question, the problem is, how do you, how do you reconcile that with the professional game? So that I mean, we, the club game and the professional game, and the international game have to find a way to work together and live together. Anything that does down one and promotes the other isn't going to work because it'll have done down one and promoted the other. I mean, it, it, it's a tricky thing. I mean... Didn't World Rugby not want to do something? No, like they that? wanted to do the complete opposite. They, they wanted the ring fence, the big eight, if mm. you like. Um, Fiji would have no more tours or no more, yeah. no more games. And that would actually destroy what they were planning. Because countries like that would get no more international tours from the, or, and not be invited to tour the big, the big nations. All the stuff that Pichot had gone on about, about the five years for the thing... It would have gone out the window because if you weren't going to be playing top class international rugby anyway, mm-hmm. what does it matter if you have to wait five years to qualify in order to play top class international rugby? <clears throat> so, yeah, well, I suppose it's just it's uh, it's unfortunate anyway. Oh, but one just one thing. I mean, people have been saying it's it, it, it it's it's a crap World Cup, and the last couple of days have kind of proved that you know they could be right. But the performances of the smaller teams have been heartening. Mm-hmm. The quality of rugby they play. Okay, they don't have the physical capabilities or the fitness and the professionalism of the big teams but the quality of rugby that's been played is of a very very high standard yeah. Uruguay played Uruguay mm. beat Fiji for all we're talking about Fiji Uruguay yeah. beat Fiji now Fiji didn't take them seriously enough that was their own fault but Uruguay still went to, had to beat them and did um, Namibia as you say have played well Tonga came within a couple of points of France and we've seen good performances across well, you think the world Japan Cup. beating us like, and then you've even like Look how poor say Argentina have been, yeah. which would be, you know, one of the I mean, one of the big eight. Well, they were in the semi final. They were unlucky enough they, against France and France. They got to the semi final mm. last year, you know. They, they and they, you know, wasn't. I think they came third in 07 as well. So like they've got a good pedigree, far better mm-hmm. than our World Cup pedigree. Indeed. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, and even we were talking there about Russia not, you know, deserving on merit to be in the competition, which is maybe true. But that doesn't mean that they play bad rugby. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's there there are shoots there if. The organising body was competent enough to nurture them, but I'm not sure that it is. Mm. Um, I suppose we just better talk about our game. We play Samoa in a, in a, on Saturday. Uh, the team was announced today. They kind of yeah. I think made 12 changes to yeah. it. Um, Taking it very seriously now. Yeah. It has yeah, to be it has said. the look of a first choice team to Which, a certain extent. You know, we've got Johnny Sexton Carney there, didn't crucially. Get the nod. Maybe he's still injured. They were mm-hmm. saying that Rob and... Uh, Reese Ruddock weren't moving freely, okay. whatever that means. Mm. I think it's one of those things like Japan, where Johnny Sexton, if that was a World Cup final, Johnny Sexton would have played in it. Yeah. But because it was a pool game against Japan, in fairness to Joe Schmidt, he went fairly full bore against Japan, but he crucially didn't play Sexton. Uh, and this time he is. So it goes to show that he's definitely taking it seriously. Um, but the same thing you could say about Rob Kearney, if it was a World Cup final. Would he probably play? He probably would. Uh, Reese Ruddock, I don't know. Is he? 
is he ahead of Tyg Byrne in the sixth journey jersey? Well, after a man of the match performance, you'd have to say he is, but who knows? Tyg Byrne has his own uh, his own uh, qualities as a six, which Ruddock doesn't, notably height in the line out. Um, he's very good over the ball for such a tall guy. So you know, he's legitimately got a got a shout in there at six. Oh, Tyg Byrne. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not entirely certain he'd even play at six. I'd say himself and Henderson might do a bit of swapping. Mm-hmm. Um, Henderson is, is, if anything, slightly quicker. Yeah, I think They're so. They're both yeah, really yeah. quick for, Hen- for big guys. Henderson can shift. Will and we so know, is James Ryan as quick as well. the Scotland-Japan game is going ahead six, before kickoff. Six hours before, before kickoff. Before kickoff, they're going to decide, yeah. Cause it, so we won't know. No, no. It has to be so Sunday morning. That's not a bad thing. We've got to get a bonus point, yeah. win. My focus minds. Or die. Well, hopefully, hopefully. They need, to, they need to start focusing because it's kind of getting they're, they're, they're in the last chance saloon now really aren't they they need this well, to be fair, a bonus point I don't think it really matters too much well, with, uh, whether Scotland and Japan play each other or not we and, need we need the bonus point for uh, sure. in terms of what it means that we need to do Yeah. we need to win, win with a bonus point whether they play each other or don't play each other yeah because but you'd have to think that schmidt's thinking for the last two years or whatever it is since straw is made right i'm sure like they don't leave many t- stones unturned but it, I, I suspect that he was thinking we will win all three matches or four matches sorry mm-hmm. and we'll qualify first out of our pool and the likelihood is that new zealand will top their pool therefore we play south africa I pres- yeah. you're just thinking like in 70 percent of his mind he's thinking that's the fixture and he, he wasn't the only one thinking that. Yeah, of course, oh, well, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But I'm sure. So, like, if anything that can help him get back, and of course me, back into that situation, <laughs> you wouldn't be the only person from your school thinking that way, even. I know. I can think of at least three others. I know. I know. Um, yeah. So I mean, it it do, it do, it will focus minds that we need those five points, um, because Ireland, Ireland, when they don't need to win, can sometimes be a bit iffy. Um, yeah, so. So we need to win, so. Should we need to win? Let's give it a lash. Because the game could go ahead, Scotland could win, and we could end up topping the group and everything be back on track. Yep. You know, so. That's um, unlikely, but possible. It is, it is possible. I mean. <clears throat> I put 50 quid on Scotland to win. Did you? On the nose. <laughs> Four to six. It's not great it means odds. They're is slightly favourites to win, to win that game. Mm. Really? Well, they were when you put the bet on anyway. Last Saturday, yeah. I don't. I don't think it's too. I don't think it's a ridiculous thing to to, to think that Scotland would win that game. I don't think and it's ridiculous at all. Japan, Japan have, have been playing well, obviously. Hmm. Yeah. But they but did. Scot- Scotland started very slowly and then have, have been ramping up, and they've got a great confidence boost from that game against Russia because they didn't just beat them; they murderized them. Second right? time, or sorry, first time in fifty years they've had two nil, sorry, nil victories, victories two nil. Victory, two clean sheet victories. Two clean sheets, yes. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> Digging me out of that one. <laughs> um, Shut up, or we make you pronounce all the Fijian players' names. <laughs> <laughs> Who most impressed you on the Fijian team, Jason? <laughs> the winger was super. <laughs> right. Well, we have a quick chat about the Pro Fourteen. It kicked off last, or didn't kick off, but we had our first home match in mm. about nineteen years. It seemed like. <laughs> and the season, could you find your way to the ODS? Well. It hadn't changed too much, in <laughs> fairness to it. Since well, next year. Hmm? Since 1932. Yeah. Uh, 11,200 at the game, so it was a pretty good crowd. That's all right, Considering, well. you know, half the team was there. And lots of people were in Japan. Mm. And no people who sit around close to me were a, few, a good few of them were in Japan. So. Well, that's because you sit in the rich seats, John. That's it. We're posh bollocks from yeah. the south side. Did they did not send their butler to keep their seat warm <laughs> while they were away. Mm. Yeah. So eight tries. That's total. how I knew the butler told me. Ah. <clears throat> eight tries in total. Young Ronan Kenna, uh, Callagher yeah. mm-hmm. nabbed a hat trick. Not a bad. Not bad to make just, your, uh, He's been debut. looking cracking. Oh, it's, on, it's on debut, but yeah. I mean, I've seen him in the last two years in the in the A team in the Celtic Cup, and he's been looking splendid. Uh, and now he's brought that form up a level, yeah, it, which it, is nice. It's he's, always hard to know, you know how they, it is because the Celtic Cup is shit. Like it's, I mean, it's super shit. Um, so it's always hard to know how players will transform from it to the thing. I mean, the AI has a higher standard. Mm. So for a guy to come in from that into the senior team and go so well, it shows a significant talent. Mm. 
I'm not sure the AA has a higher standard. Well, in some ways it is, I suppose. Come on, the Celtic Cup's rubbish, John. It's absolute muck. It's even worse than the British Irish Cup. Well, that's true. And that's true. You saw teams coming over, the English teams coming over, and the Welsh uh, Premiership selects coming over. But the thing about it is, it's all under 20s players nearly. You know, there's very few, certainly for Leicester. This time of the year, this particular year, I've been a World Cup year. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, the. Let's just say the Ospreys as an example. The Ospreys are played, you know, an unrecognisable team last yep. week. And so that's their seconds. Yeah. So their thirds are playing in the... Of now, course. We have the strength to go down that level, but a lot of clubs don't, so... Yeah, did, what was it we scored in the Celtic Cup? Was it 60 squillion points? It, what, we, we got was all it, bon- seven, seven bonus, bonus points. points. Like, wins, like, so that says it all, really. It does it? say it all. But it's much more a development competition than the British and Irish <laughs> Cup. You know, it's it's but, all about but the these lads younger need, players. Get, need games and you know, like they're playing as a, they're training together and playing as a unit together. Mm-hmm. It's all grand for them to go in and have a weight session with their Leinster buddies. But that's what it was but designed then split for. Up and go back to Lansdowne, UCD, etc., etc. You know what I mean? Like they need to be playing and training. As it was designed to have eight that, eight that, weeks or seven weeks is, in a row of playing games. That is a benefit that they that they get to play together as a team, week the, in week out. Week in week out. The only thing is the the standard isn't high. Yeah. Well, it's um, the opposition you say. Yeah. Well, that's the op- standard of the opposition mm. isn't high. I mean, it's not Leicester's fault, but it is it is an issue. Um, whereas the AIL is actually, as a league, is a really good league. Last couple of years, last four or five years, I mean, there's been some. High standard room, and you can see that actually because guys are beginning to come out of the AL, yeah, straight into like academy and first team situation, which leads Maybe. us back into Rowan Osborne, which, the... back, which I was got that was the road I was taking, John, <laughs> to bring go. us back, and uh, which brings us back into Rowan Osborne, for example, mm-hmm. a guy who has kind of gone the long way around, and he's not the first, there's been a couple in the last few years who've, who've done that, um, yeah. and certainly say Mick McGrath, the, yeah. for the, example, back exactly. in Matt O'Connor's time, That's right. and try, seven's try scoring hero, Mick McGrath, mm-hmm. have you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you see maybe teams like Connacht that might not have the infrastructure to have <clears throat> or you know the strength and depth for the for the academy which Leinster does so they're dipping into the AIL to pick up mm. a couple of, of you know good players that might have slipped through the net and through Leinster or whatever in fairness to Connacht they were third in the in the Celtic Cup I know it's not a very high standard but you know they were better than Munster put it that way so their academy is, is not wow yeah, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Their academy is not, you know, is, is a step above all the West regions. Academy is better than Monsters Academy. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, well, I suppose we, we were talking about um, Ronan Kelleher. Yeah. I just yeah. wonder, I wonder if, like, uh, Tracy's, his star is starting to really mm. fall, you know, when you think he was on the bench, say, behind Cronin for most of our European Cup runs the last couple of seasons. Well, he had begun and to get displaced last year. Burn, let's get ahead of him. Yeah, Brian Burn. Burn. So, um, I, have a, I have a feeling that Brian Burns carrying some kind of a knock or something. Um, just from, what, from stuff I've heard down, down in, 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 in Carlo. So I'm wondering if he is. Mm-hmm. And if that's the case, you know, you might see a very different... There'd be a real push for that second spot when Cronin gets back. Yeah. There's a right crop of them, though. There's, like... There's Dan Sheehan R- as well. Ronan, Ronan Kelleher. Really exact, but he's he's close he's enough. Carlo, in age, <laughs> neither of them are from Carlo. Well, I like the Burn <laughs> twins. They think they both went to Clangos. Um, so you've got you've got those guys, and there's another guy, uh, McKee, John McKee, is it yeah, James yeah. McKee? He came from Campbell College in in uh, Ulster, and is playing for Belvedere, I believe. All Belvedere. So he's he's another, you know, prospect, who is in the mix there. I don't know whether he's above. Between the between the Sheen brothers above or below either of them, but he's in the mix as well, and they're all of an age. So like, okay, Sean Cronin is what about thirty three now? Tracy's twenty eight. Uh, Brian Byrne is twenty six. And then, six yeah. then there's a kind of a all these guys are glutted these guys in around the 
21 and down to about 18 or 19. So mm. there's well, prom- then, promising stocks coming through all there. All he you know? do is keep doing what he's doing, which is, you know, scrummaging well, playing well, <coughs> and throwing well. Mm-hmm. You know, that's all you can expect from a guy, and he's, do- he's doing it all to the... Yeah, no, he's, he, wants, he, seems, you know? he yeah. seems the real deal. And good to see Harry Byrne. Uh, yeah, Ross's another man, brother, speaking of real yeah. deals. Mm. Like, he, he got off, he got his Leinster try scoring yeah. uh, record off to start. So, first home match as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. First senior home match. Yeah, he's he looks uh, he looks to have that little bit more pace than Ross Byrne. Yeah, he does, yeah. Which, yeah. Ross Byrne can look one pace sometimes. Which might, you know, might come into be, into into bearing when the two of them are going head to head for a, a jersey in a few years' time. You yeah, know? you never know. So we'll see. So I thought we looked pretty pretty uh, sharp. Yeah, the thing the thing that really impressed me was the intensity. Mm-hmm. Um, there were guys getting involved in, in 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 sets of phase play three and four times. You know, they were getting they were they were hitting it up. They were getting off the ground. And they were going again. I thought Ross Maloney when he came on actually was really impressive in, in, in this phase. His work rate, the work rate of all the players yeah. was just superb. I thought it was, the one thing that really impressed me, and I was watching it from home, but the one thing that really, really impressed me was, was the work rate of the, of, of the players. I have to say though, uh, the, the Ospreys have a massive crisis in the second row. Every one yeah. of them is injured or at the World Cup. Like the, the Beard got injured, which meant Bradley Davis had to go to the World Cup. And they have, the two of the guys who are left are injured. So they had, Dan Six Lydiot. foot two or three, Dan Lydiot playing in the second row. Like he's playing against Devon Toner and Scott Fardy. You know what I mean? Like two of the best in the business. Mm. One who played in the last World Cup final and one who has played in all of Ireland. Who Ireland's, should be playing in the next? Who should be playing in <laughs> in in the World Cup himself? So massive mismatch. And plus the two of those are six foot eleven and six foot six or seven. So you know. Uh, playing against a six foot two or three lock yeah, know, so in a professional game oh, like so we, we had them you know we we just had to throw the ball into the line out and somebody had to put their hand up and didn't even need to lift them mm. so <laughs> you know that that's a huge disadvantage to the Ospreys and they, and they aren't they don't have the depth we do and they have injury profiles and you know so they weren't they were always on a hiding to nothing in that game but I, I, and the I, fact that we showed them and gave them a hiding is a credit to us. Exactly. Um, because but, all Leinster could do was do what they did, yeah. which is go out. And they really did. I mean, they worked their asses off and the intensity was massive. And I was really impressed by that. It really boded well for the yeah. for the and, rest of the season that they had that attitude. And it's great to see like uh, Joe Tamani, who, you know, shipped an awful lot of criticism in his first season here. Okay, he was injured for a bit, but people did question his commitment or whatever. But like he's come back, like the two matches I've seen him play this season, he certainly... Been hitting, decent. The, hitting the ground running yeah. yeah yeah and it's good to see him like i mean he obviously is a, a class player like he's you don't get 20 odd caps for the aussies mm-hmm. or nothing and uh you know it's 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 in games like this when you are missing 14 lads that he has to be the the main man on the pitch and he's kind of stepping up to that now yeah yeah he's, he's taking responsibility which is is good to see i mean he's playing well but he's taking responsibility as well um it's a it's a it's a position we're not entirely weak in. Um, I mean, Conor O'Brien is there. Um, who's a very very good player. Hasn't had a look in this season. Hasn't really had a look in this season. Um, but I'm also I mean the the thing all you have to do to get onto the team and answer is be better than the guy that's in front of you. Not that hard, is it? No, it would, but the, at the end of the day, that's all you have to do because when I say that's all you have to do, I mean. Especially, there's no. But you have to take your chance, right? Those oh, yeah. the guy that's ahead of them. Technically, if we're playing in the European Cup semi final next week, right? They're going to be the Irish stars that are away in Japan at the yeah. moment, more or less. So you got to make sure that in these matches, when you're playing the Edinburghs and, and Ospreys, when the World Cup is on, or when the Six Nations is on, or the Autumn Internationals are on, that you, if you get your chance, you shine. Yeah. And like someone like Hugo Keenan, I thought he had a great game. Yeah, mm. yeah. Like yeah. just, I just love seeing someone with that enthusiasm and 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 um, uh, awareness <laughs> around him. That uh, uh, like I just thought, Jesus, that, could, that kid could have something. And do you know what I mean? He just yeah. needs, like God forbid, one of the whether Carney or or uh, Larmer gets injured, but he's someone that you could just say, give him a couple of seasons, and he well, could, he could he shift Larmer sideways. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, the other man. Was, uh, so just to finish yeah. up, the, the the point w- that we're at in terms of Rob Carney's career now 
is that um, Rob Carney is now turning into Gervin Dempsey. He could so, end up supporting the so next So what we're looking for through. is the next Rob Carney. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And we saw how Gerv was actually a model pro when he was at the end of his career. Big time. Um, so what we need is somebody who'll come up and because I, I don't see any reason like I see no reason to think that Rob would be any different. So what we need is someone who come up who can milk that experience from the Enter. from the rugby nipple of of, of Carney. <laughs> um, but, mm. uh, no, it's a nice disturbing analogy. It's illusion. a lovely analogy, isn't it? <laughs> but um, so it could be Keenan, it could be Jimmy O'Brien, it could be any of the rest of them. But Keenan's the guy in position. He's, and the thing is, when you get that chance, you have to seize it. Absolutely, yeah. And that's what he's done <clears throat> in the games thus far. Yeah, um, the, the other man that hasn't got a look in, of course, as well as Conor O'Brien, is Ronan Callagher's brother, Keane, who mm. came back from um, came back from Connacht, Connacht uh, two years away in Connacht, I think. Mm. Who, where he did reasonably well without setting the world on fire. Yeah, I would have said that exactly. He didn't set the world on fire down there. Yeah, so where is he getting a look in? And why, you know, like he's the only signing we made, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so mm-hmm. is he, you know, what's it's, going on there? I have no clue. What's going on is, 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 A, is he fit? And B, is he better than the guys who are? Well, he was, he, if you read the uh, water boy uh, rules, Usually a water boy is going to start next week, especially when they're coming back from injury. Now, I don't know if he was injured or not, but he was water boy last week. The thing is, all a water boy has to be able to do is run the straight line. That's very true. So we we like to see him anyway. We like to see him giving a go. He didn't get picked. He didn't get picked at all. This he didn't even get in the bench. Yeah. So he might. He might. Like a, the thing is, he might. He might even be fit. We don't. We're in a. We're in a time now. For whatever reason. That just because Leinster don't say a player is injured doesn't mean he isn't injured. Of course. Players now have to give consent for each and every injury they have to be publicised. If they don't give consent, then Leinster can't say they're injured. That's true. And also they might have uh, tactical have reasons, t- for, reasons for, 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 well, for not saying that they're injured. There's a whole bunch of reasons. Yeah. So, I'm sure he's a bit disgruntled though if he's made the move, decided to move back to Dublin. Well, I know they weren't impressed when he left in the first place. Okay. You know? Well, I, 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 I doubt they re-signed him just to prove a point. No. <laughs> no, but um, like, I'm sure he's kind of going, well, things aren't really working out here. Like, we, it'd be a bit early for him to be doing that. For sure, for sure. But let's say he is fit and we've played three matches. And the, the, the two full-backs that are ahead of him are in the Irish squad, whether it's Lar- Larmer or, or Rob Carney. And he's still not even making the bench. Now, let's presume he's fit. Sure, he's kind of going. What did I give up a starting position, or certainly match day twenty three position, in Connacht for? So I can't even get on the bench in the on, on our seconds team when we play, when fourteen of the firsts are away in Japan. Well, all he has to do is be better than the guys in front of him. Yeah, but sometimes, I mean, sometimes Dave, your face doesn't fit into a team. I don't. And sometimes it's something to do. You could you could be the best player. A training. Yeah, no, no I, I agree. Sometimes it doesn't, but from what we know of these coaches, Darren Cave. Uh, yeah. From what we situation. know of these coaches, do you think that they're tight? No, I don't. Yeah. But I'm just saying that sometimes they might say, "Do you know? I don't fancy him. I don't think he's great." That's just a like it's 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 a a very subjective thing. Oh, for the coach, I mean, you know, you could, so. you could even have one coach thinks he's great and another coach doesn't. So, mm. um, it, it could be anything, but we we don't know. The thing is, we don't know. We don't. All we know is that he hasn't. Uh, as you say, it is very early days, and it is very early days. For all we know, they could be keeping him in reserve because they might think. His particular standard or his particular what method of play is more suited to games against I don't know Scarlets or whoever, or that he might be they might be building up his fitness to a certain point. You, you don't know. You, you, any any kind of speculation based is just that speculation. Yeah. Indeed. And we anyway. just quickly looking over some of the other results. Did anything else happen in the Pro Fourteen last week? No. Yes, it did. Quite a few things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, Glasgow still to get off the mark. They're even the, the beaten finalists last year. They were uh, beaten by Scarlets uh, last weekend at home. Yeah. Like okay, I know all of these matches are going to be massively affected by the the World, the, Cup. The World Cup. But and Glasgow more than a lot, a lot oh, of uh, sure, yeah. The backbone well, the Scarlets, Scarlets team. probably lo- lost quite a few. But yeah. like, it's not like these clubs are that the all these clubs are, you know. There's four teams from each exactly. country, so Italy and Scotland don't have that luxury, mm. you know. And neither of them select a huge amount of stars from abroad. You've got Parise, and you've got guys like, uh, well, Hogg is now from abroad, since he's he's in Exeter, but uh, Maitland, 
is uh, mm. playing in the Premiership. There's a few, but there's very not that many, you know. Mm, yeah. Uh, so you've got to you've got to lose a lot of players if you're Glasgow and Edinburgh or the two Italian teams. So yeah, I wouldn't be panicking quite yet, but they don't look like they're the force they were last season. They were. They were. They were way ahead of everyone in early season. They weren't the force last season, even that they were the season before, kind of thing. Possibly. Um. So it'd be interesting. To see. I mean, it, it 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 is too early to say. It really, really is. Um. Although I'd say they would be disappointed to lose to Scarlets because I'd say that they wouldn't regard Scarlets as been. Scarlets wouldn't be that far off them mm. in terms of. Well, Scarlets they were beaten finalists the previous year, so yeah. Yeah. their kind of star might be starting to come back up again. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. New coach down there. Yeah. In Scarletania. Well, well, last year Scarlets. Young lad too. Scarlets had a bad year last year. I don't think they were too impressed with themselves. So they they always I'd say they might have done a fair bit of soul searching over the summer. Mm-hmm. Okay, two Irish teams were down in South Africa on tour. Yeah. Munster had a win against the Kings, but I think. I think the uh, cool mine under 12 girls <laughs> that are being coached expertly again this season. Um, well, oh, you've taken the year off again, have you? <laughs> could, uh, could have given the Kings a, a bit of a... But the other match was, I watched this match, was Cheetah's Ulster. Mm. Uh, a thriller. Uh, well, 99 points. Mm. 98 points. It was a game out. of super rugby, really, was it? Yeah. And then was it altitude or attitude? Yes. yes. Definitely. Yeah. Well, as I was saying to Dave earlier, before we went on air, you would expect a team that's been well tra- thrashed on the high felt to fade. Or high, teams generally, I mean, Ireland f- faded on the high felt there only a couple of years ago uh, and looked like they were running through quagmire in the last f- quarter of the game. Whereas Ulster came back and got snatched a bonus point. In the la- now, I'm sure there was a bit of disinterest having scored nearly 60 points. 62. Uh, well, ultimately they did score 62, but, uh, you know, when, when oh, Ulster started point, yeah. coming back, um, they were, the Cheetahs were probably realising the game was well won and took their foot off the pedal like Leinster have been guilty of doing many times. But the fact that Ulster were able to come back in that proportion, in that portion of the game where you would expect them to be fading says something about their fitness and the fact that they're taking a, a point away from Bloemfontein a lot of teams won't. Yeah. Glasgow mm-hmm. didn't last week, for example. Uh, Munster are going there this week. We'll see what happens there. Um, and then I, I presume the two are swapping over, so Ulster are going to be playing the Kings and and Munster are going to be playing uh, the Cheetahs. But the Cheetahs are, are on a flyer. But King Ruin there, uh, yeah. running the show and taking the kicks and they won the Curry Cup. And they picked up a couple of lads from Greek as well. A nobody players. to the World um, Cup. Your man Val Mink. Val Mink, Mink. yeah, he was, he's he's, he's the Greek as fullback. They picked him up. He was superb, and they had another winger, um, who just had serious toe. Mm. And there's a lot to be said for it, you know. Mm. Um, they had another lad last season. He I think he scored a couple of tries in in the match in the RDS. He was a flyer as well. Was that man Pimpy? Was with the with the off at the World Cup? Now? Yeah, that's him. I think. Yeah, yeah. God, he was a flyer. Um, but like Ulster had, they kind of have a, com- a combination of a strong and weak team. Like they had fellas sneaking, they what? Sweet, sweet. That's weak team. <laughs> well, they had Craig Gilroy, Luke Marshall, Louis Luddock, Cooney, and but, Herring playing. Well, Luddock was on the bench. Yeah, he was on the bench. Yeah, but like they had, they did have some some. I can say household names, but they had some Irish internationals playing for them. Yeah, you know, yeah. like there was all talk about. Oh well, Rob, uh, you know, Cooney should definitely go to the World Cup, and mm-hmm. you know this kind of stuff. Like, Got a bit of a lesson from room here, in fairness. Mm, but there was, there certainly, like, there was some fellas that you'd kind of say, well, they're quite young uh, players playing for them as well. So it wasn't like they had, you know, 13 or 14 internationals playing for them. But still in all, when you have five guys that, have, like the fellas I've named, you would expect them to not be fucking beaten by 40 odd points. The, what you just have to do is, 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 is show, put in a few good performances. In the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah. They uh, have to win on the road. That's the big one. The year yeah. before last, they were super at home. Almost unbeaten at home. Mm-hmm. Um, it was when they went, when they came north that the things kind of fell apart. But they have a Curry Cup under the belt. They've made a few signings. Um, they might even make a few more before the World Cup is out, by the time when the World Cup ends. Um, because there's one or two guys there who could be repurposed. And they have a lot of seats to sell. They have a lot of seats to sell. They play, they play at a huge oh, stadium. Yeah. Um, but they're getting thick. I mean, there were, there were 6,000 at that game. It just that it rattles around in that stadium. Thing, yeah. um, 
but it is it is their stadium and i mean it's 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 the free state stadium it's where they always played so um as you said ulster ulster uh, like the orange but not the free state <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very confusing game for the mm. ulster people <laughs> for some ulster people mm. love orange hate free state mm-hmm. Well, there was one of the other match, uh, final match was Connacht against Treviso. And mm-hmm. after our game against Treviso the previous week, where we thought, oh, this Treviso team looked pretty strong. They certainly put it up against us. We had to work very hard for our win over there. They kind of failed to deliver. They were beaten 41-6. to six in It was Galway. in Connacht, though, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think Galway is... Galway is actually a place that intimidates a lot of teams. Because you come in there and it's wild. Um, you've got the Atlantic just over the road. Won't be long. We'll be down there ourselves. Oh, I know, I know, and it has intimidated Leinster as well. Yeah. And I mean, it, and it's a, and I mean this in a positive way. It's a hostile ground. You know, it's a hostile crowd in a, in a good way. Um, but it's not an easy place to go. And if you're not hundred percent on it, you're going to get done. Yeah. And and, and they did. Treviso, who might be a bit wishy washy going away from home anyway at this stage of the season with so many players missing, weren't a hundred percent on it or anywhere near it, and they got done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So looking towards next week, we've named. Or that we're we're recording this so late that the, t- the teams it have seems been actually named. Been yeah. named. So it's. Uh, you see world rugby. You see this. When we have a problem, we can move the day of the program. <laughs> we can even change the time. <laughs> that was because it's supposed to go at half six and the start at quarter to six, seven because because Jason was stuck on the M fifty. We can we have contingencies. <laughs> Yes, and we even moved all of our uh, 50,000 supporters with us. Yes, at yes, no yes. cost. All our, and view- their all, tickets. Our, all our viewer moved with us. <laughs> <laughs> and his dog. And his dog. In fairness. The dog's not watching. This dog got more sense. He's inside watching Curry. He's, he's asleep. <laughs> so the team is Hugh Keenan, Dave Carney, Rory Lachlan, Joe Tamani, James Lowe, Ross Byrne, uh, Gibson Park, Dooley, Kelleher, Mike Bent, Toner Fardy. Max Deegan, uh, Penny and Doris. So it's a pretty strong team. Yeah. yeah no, it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty it's strong as you, well, pretty much as strong as you can get this time of the year. I, I, oh, I'd, I'd, cer- I'd, cer- I'd certainly uh, agree with that. I think it's a really strong team. Um, uh, with lots of guys in form. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting now to see because uh, one guy we haven't seen this season, certainly not in competitive a- action, is Scott Penny. Mm-hmm. And Will Connors has gone out and started the season like a steam train. Yeah. So he has to <coughs> has to go out and put in a performance now as well because mm-hmm. you know it's, it's kind of second season for him, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah. Like he yeah. kind yeah, of he burst on big reputation his, last yeah. year and see how he goes. It Connors was injured for a lot of the time. Yeah, he ended year, up yeah. with a fourth year in the academy because of his injuries and then he ended up injured the first year he was at, in, in the senior squad. But he's a really good player. He is a really good player, but he's a very different player. He's he's very very tall for an open side. I think he's six three or four. Mm. Uh, certainly six three anyway. And and uh, Penny's the opposite. He's your traditional six foot one kilos. He, he's um, Penny is only under. He's about six foot. He's six foot according to. Maybe even even under. So he's more like your Shane Jennings sized. He's one centimeter taller than Michael Hooper. Ooh. <laughs> One cool. centimetre and one kilo. Really? Okay. Yeah, it's a weighty kilo, centimetre. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, nice to see him. He's, he really uh, sprang into action any time I saw him for the under-20s, for the A-team. Oh, for the, Absolutely he's player. really top-notch. So but it's a step up. It is, it is. So, but he took that step up last year he with has, a plum. He absolutely, he has. And now he has to take up the... The, the second year. The gauntlet so flung in front of him by, by Sir Will of Connors. Take yeah. on the chat, and it's, it's it's great because when Leinster are at their peak, they have multiple players challenging for positions. But this is their time now. I mean, this is they, they it, Jennings and O'Brien are gone. Uh, Levy and Van der Fleer won't be around a lot because they'll be off with it. So this is this is it's their top chance to, to to make it their team. Yeah, and you know also there's opportunities for them because you mentioned Dan Levy, like he could be probably out for the season. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, even Conan, like he broke his foot, he's after having mm. surgery. I don't know how long the prognosis for that is, but I presume it's till the new year anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were talking, he'd be fortunate to be back for the Six Nations, I read somewhere. Oh, okay, right, so that's even longer, it's five months. So, you know, like, it's it's these guys' opportunity now to take a claim. Okay, we're not expecting them to be the next Sean O'Brien right now, 
But Sean O'Brien, 10 years ago, was getting his foot in the door. Let's see these guys do the same. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That, that's, I mean, there's, there's opportunities right across the back row. Because, as you say, with Conan injured, there's uh, opportunities, with, and Ruddock away, and, you know, you've got opportunities at 6, 7, and 8. Um, yeah. You've got Doris, uh, who he seems to... The thing... He doesn't. He didn't come into the situation with the. I mean, Doris said it was a highly reputed uh, schools player, mm-hmm. but he didn't have the, the towering reputation that Max Deegan had. But one thing I noticed about Doris, do you know who he reminds me of more than any other player? He reminds me of Jamie Heasley. Doing the right thing, Just the right quiet time. efficiency, mm-hmm. um, and he'll always do the right thing. He'll make the right choice. If he has a hundred choices to make, he'll make ninety nine of them will be the right one. You know, he, he's very impressive. You that reckon game. that's what's getting him in ahead of Deegan? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Deegan is some player. Deegan's a... Probably, he's a real highlights real he's, player. He's probably one of the best footballers in the entire squad. Mm-hmm. The, I think what the coaches are trying to do is work out how best to utilise that for the entire squad. You know, Because I think that, Dor- that Doris at number <coughs> eight knits everything together and ties everything together the way that he's abused to. And I think that he's... Maybe he, Deegan might be more versatile as well. He might be one more... He, it, might be, it might be that Doris has a longer... Turns out to be the long term Leinster number eight. A couple of years younger though, isn't he, Doris? I think so. Yeah, I think but two. Deegan will be the guy I reckon who'll bench during the European matches because he has that versatility. Oh, so he's two years he's two years down the track, yeah. I'd yeah. say, experience wise. He was on that team with um, James Ryan and yeah. that beat the uh, beat the Yeah, shouldn't he win Baby right Blacks. Year? He did in, yeah. that in that tournament. I think. Yeah. So you know Oh no, he's he, I mean Max Deegan's six, was this sc- was like sixteen? Sixteen. The sky think, is the yeah. limit, but I reckon I it's it's gonna be interesting to see how they work out how to best utilise him. Because he's so good he can play anywhere. He could probably make a decent fist of seven. Mm, he's quite tall again. Yeah. But yeah. But he's very athletic. I mean he, and and gymnastic. Mm. Yeah, and I mean that in the sense of being able yes, he is tall, but he can get down low. Yeah, there's a lot it seems to be a lot of that now in the game. Like it'd be unheard of to have somebody like Ty Byrne. Yeah, Jacqueline on a ball. Yeah. Somebody that height, Jacqueline on a ball, even five years ago, it would have been, what? Why would you waste a guy, you know, doing that when you've got some Groundhog 7 guy who can do it, you know, or a hooker or whoever? Now, it seems to be whoever's there first and can do the job is, is doing it, you know? It's, it's like everything in the game. It's like we uh, James Ryan and, and Ian Henderson now are, are two pacey second rows that can put it about they can carry they can tackle they it's can supposed to be a game for to... everyone lads what's gone wrong with yeah. us <laughs> it's, it's, they're all doing everything now you know? don't worry there's still plenty of little fat lads good <laughs> so like obviously um, Edinburgh also unbeaten in their opening couple of games so they're going to put it up to us as well like indeed mm-hmm. you know they'll have that courier from Leicester <laughs> yeah <laughs> well we them. might uh, find that when, when it was announced that the pool or the groups or the conferences that's the word were changing uh, this season we were kind of going oh no we're getting Glasgow instead of Edinburgh we might at the end of the season be going hold mm-hmm. on a minute that wasn't such a worst. great that was such a great swap after all or, you know, or Edinburgh that was wasn't going the, well last year and the Quills fell off the wagon yeah um, right at the very end of the, right at the very end they got to the quarter final of Europe didn't they they were beaten by Munster, Munster on a mm-hmm. very controversial call was it Tyke Byrne little shoulder charge yeah mm. yeah um, oh sorry, sorry he went down like a the uh, Proverbial thunder breaks. Uh, let's just leave it as a controversial call. <laughs> um, and that kind of that kind of knocked the wheels off the wagon. I think cheap Mexican horror was the thing. <laughs> really um, but that 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 that, that did uh, unseat their season. Um, and I think Cockrell has put it up to them not to let that happen this year. Big time. They like as John was saying about Glasgow. They've lost a lot of players because Scotland only has two teams, um, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But there were a lot of players, good players left behind. Uh, Dylan van der Merwe is one of the most feared finishers in the Pro 14. He's got great pace. He's got huge power. Not brilliant going backwards, but the, <coughs> that's every Edinburgh winger ever. Um, they've they've got, got the Dick Cockbread kind of yeah, well, yeah, factor. Yeah. They've got uh, Nick Groom and Jakob van der Walt at halfback. Good players. And Mark, Mark Bennett at 12. They have good players there. 13, isn't he? He was 13, supposed 13, to be 13. the next Brian O'Driscoll. Actually, there's loads of next Brian O'Driscoll's. And he's supposed to be still better than Brian O'Driscoll in his prime. Yeah, you can, you can go down job <laughs> Why is he center. not at the World Cup? You can go down job centre and five Brian O'Driscoll's for a tenner. Five next Brian O'Driscoll's for a tenner. Um, I don't know. Uh, but Edinburgh are a decent side. I don't think they'd be strong enough. 
I don't think the pack will be strong enough. Not when you see the team that we put out. No, I don't think the pack will be strong enough. But when they get all their players back and they're they're motoring along and everything's going, I think they're going to cause. I think they're going to make the playoffs this year. Mm. I'm quite confident see. to that. We shall see. All right, boys. As ever, thanks a million, and thank you very much for watching. If you do look at us on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or what else is there? I'll do uh, this. Pornhub. Pornhub. <laughs> give, give us a like and a thumbs up. I don't think you want to be looking at Jason on that. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. His own section.